Mark Pugh, what's up, bro? What's happening, man? How you doing? Man, I'm good. So, uh, you just saved the night the other night. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is hilarious. I guess so, man. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to be on the show, but I just got in town, and uh, I wanted to make it if I could, so yeah. I showed up. I was in the green room chilling, and uh, I thought I wasn't going to be on the show, and then next thing I noticed, like, hey, you want to do like five minutes? I was like, for sure. Man, it was, I, I always do some time, bro. It was brutal. It was it, brutal because we had like some local comics. Yeah, we had Chris was hosting the show. Right, another local comic. I can't remember the dude's name. Uh, uh Evan. Good, Evan good, Cooper. good set, good yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. And then those two guys they brought in came on, bro. And it yeah. just there was a heckler. Oh, she was real? drunk. Oh, the lady. In yeah, the the lady. <laughs> she was drunk. And then uh, you know, it just went to shit. And then yeah. the, I think the headline dude didn't even want to come up, bro. And he just seemed like he was just. This is just from my, my perspective. Right, I don't right, know right. what happened. I'm not talking shit, but I'm just. No. It was a rough. It was a rough crowd for them. You know what I'm Damn, saying? And yeah. then you came out like and just fucking. He, he did good, bro. I appreciate it. Can we can we cuss on here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, for sure. yeah, fuck yeah, man. yeah, You yeah. can do the fuck you want on here. Yeah. Well, I, I shat on the stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took a shit right on the stage. For real? <laughs> nah. <it's fine. laughs> he like for real. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> That's a part that, that that seems like to be like a peculiar part of the set. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just take it. I, I think if yeah. you go after everybody went and you just take a shit on the stage after you kill it, man. Can't nobody follow that. <laughs> I think I might do that on my like very last show, like right before I die as right. a comedian. I think I just shit on stage yeah. and then just yeah, I think just to set me apart from like Richard Pryor or something. Well, how did you get into comedy? Uh, bro, I I got into it. Um, I think Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. I used to watch a lot of that stuff. So then I'm talking about Delirious, Eddie Murphy Raw. So I'll tell you how I got to Delirious. I used to watch his movies a lot when I was little. Yep. And then we my mom used to take me to um Hollywood video all the time. And I saw Eddie Murphy, but it wasn't a movie, it was a stand up. So I was like, Can we take this home? So I watched that and it was a rap since then. <laughs> like I did uh comedy the first time in the fourth or fifth grade for a talent show. And like I was a quiet kid, so I didn't speak. But when I got on stage, I like just blacked out and people were like I didn't even know he had a voice, and it was it was on from there, bro. Like I used to fall asleep listening to um, Comedy Central as a kid, and I just fall asleep and wake up at like three o'clock in the morning. Some random thirty minute special would be on, and I just I think that's what developed my kind of like taste for comedy. It wasn't just like all black comics or all this type. It was a broad spectrum of different types. Yeah, and I just gravitated to the whole art form. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much how I started. Well, it, um, yeah, I could tell. I was like, I looked over at my wife. I was like, this is like, he just hit me with some Eddie Murphy shit, like oh, straight up. And I was like, that, that, that. he had, I, I wanted to ask you that because like that had to be, because it, I could see it, you know, I could see oh, it in thanks. there. But I always love that stuff too. I like watching, um, those stand ups, like, dude, yeah, raw and delirious, yeah. which is funny because I watched raw before I watched delirious. For real, I was the opposite, yeah, because yeah, that was yeah. in order, like, you did it yeah. chronologically right, but I didn't. I watched them backwards. Did you right. watch, did you watch any stand up? I watched a lot of stand up. My 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 guys though were like Ari Spears. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, oh Tommy. Uh, what's Tommy's last name? Uh, Davidson. Tommy Davidson. Yeah. yeah um, and then uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I really liked er, like early Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. Was yeah, my thing, yeah, yeah. and then uh, bro, Sid. Honestly, Sid's one of my favorite comedians Dude. of all time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That he tough. Their whole yeah. that whole tour they had. Oh, was, the, uh, uh, Kings of Comedy. Kings of Comedy was yeah. him. Dude, Steve Harvey. Yeah, Steve. Cedric. Bernie. Uh, Bernie. Actually, my Bernie, favorite yeah. all time is Bernie though. Ber- uh, Bernie. I forget about Bernie because he died in two thousand eight. Right. But I'll say you know what I'm saying. But yeah, like yeah, Bernie is probably my favorite of all time. For real. Overall. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's a lot of man they they shook the game up with the HBO specials back then you know, oh, when they yeah, came yeah. out and and then you had uh, Eddie Griffin I always liked him he was legit too, bro. <laughs> he's still funny Eddie yeah, Griffin's still funny, funny bro. he's crazy as hell but he's still funny well you have all them guys that went off and kind of went on and did their kid movies you know what I'm saying and, oh, yeah, and yeah, cast yeah. their checks and said fuck it and they hadn't yes. done the, they're not doing sets anymore yeah but hell even I mean Chappelle leaving for so long and coming back yeah it's it, just he he did great. The, he did the best thing he could do. He left, and it just like you can't repeat that in a as a. That's not a blueprint to like mm-hmm. in success. Like people can tell you what to do with a lot of ways to make uh, make yourself successful, but he pretty much made himself a legend by leaving the show, and then just kind of like falling off the face of the earth. And it was around the time where the internet was still new. So people thought he was missing the whole time. He went to Africa for a week and came back and just did small spots here and there, but he just wasn't in the public eye. Yeah. Right. People thought he was on crack, people thought he died, <laughs> but then he just came back and he created a demand and it's like, you can't do that now. If you- No. Well, the the signal's different now. Yeah, the way yeah. we take information is, you yeah. know, 
you yeah, know the way it's just everything's changed but sure. i mean so what how did you so you, you started you said fourth grade talent show yeah and then when did you start doing actual stand-up like in bars or where what have you comedy clubs or anything i like want to say it was like 20 either 17 or 18 that's when i started to do it again for real i went to a there was a bar down the street from my house and they did open mics but it was just music and i just walked in because i was like let me try to take this serious and i just walked in and uh asked him if i could tell jokes and he was like yeah fuck yeah do what you want so i got up there and i just started doing like some crowd work and some little jokes and then like it it did good and i just kept going and then ever since then that's when it kind of like well no i take that back actually before then i started doing it at bears when they did it so it's probably 2016. how old were you then yeah. I'm 31 now and okay. probably 27 ish something okay. like that yeah yeah probably 27 26 okay yeah um go ahead well your create your creativity isn't limited to so that's like one of the things I still got that photo of uh, oh, the drawing that drawing he did a yeah. drawing of me one time uh, where I was like a samurai so yeah, yeah, yeah. your creativity is not <laughs> yeah. like limited to so here's the thing me and Mark used to work together when we were like 18 and i guess you were just turning 20. yeah yeah um but we used to work together at avocados california rolling sushi now just called california rolling sushi on my being favorite job City. yeah that yeah that, that job as far as like a like a job yeah like this ain't what i'm doing now ain't no job and what you're doing now ain't no sure. you love doing what you're doing <laughs> you know sure, what I'm yeah, yeah. but like as far as a job yeah that was the best fucking job ever yeah bro. but to get off of that mm -hmm. your creativity isn't limited to comedy so mm -hmm. like I know that's one aspect of it, but I mean, outside of like visual art, I mean, you're pretty talented at editing. You're pretty talented at making videos. Yeah. Like, what got you into just media in general? I don't know, bro. I I've been drawing since I could pick up a pencil, and then I just anything I like. If I saw something that interests me, I would try to figure out a way to do it. Like, I love Dragon Ball Z, and I couldn't. My mom wouldn't buy me the toys that I wanted, the Dragon Ball Z toys. So I was like, how can I figure out a way to make my own toys? Yeah. So then that translated. Then I would go to, like, I asked my mom to take me to, like, um, what's it called? Like, art hobby shops to see if mm -hmm. I could find, like, mold or something to create it. So it's anything I got fascinated by. If I seen somebody else do something that I liked, I tried to figure out how to do it. Yeah. And that's just landed me so many different places. I, I think I started video editing. Actually, uh, when I was really young, I did I learned how to do uh, stop motion animation. I did that for a science project yeah. uh, in the fifth grade, I think. Yeah. And so that's when I started making movies. I had a, my parents had a camcorder, and I just filmed stuff. And yeah. I was in a room for hours, just take a picture or take you know a second clip, move this thing, second clip. So that's when it started. And then I just picked everything back up every few months, every few years. I find something else I was interested in, and just. Uh -huh rolled into Cause you everything food, rolled into it so you had a food show you were doing for a second right yeah 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 i, I want to bring it back but I, I got so many ideas but i'm yeah. trying to fund something to fund everything find something so i can fund everything else i want to do right so yeah i had a uh, food show i think we were still working together around the time i trying to do that i think so Probably. because i remember like i remember the trailer being clean because you were doing the speed ramping and stuff like oh yeah you're, like different food hitting your face and all that shit <laughs> yeah it, bro yeah. Just what, kind of, what kind of food you cook oh <sighs> A lot of stuff. I uh, I want to say ramen because people are arguing on Facebook. <laughs> that should be over by the time this yeah, goes yeah, out, yeah. though. Yeah, it's like a one hit one or other. But I do. Uh, I I like to take just random stuff. I have random ideas, and if I want to learn how to do something, I look it up and then try it. So I I couldn't really tell you a specific thing. Uh, but I just like as creative as I am, I'm the same way in the kitchen. Yeah. But that that food show, I was just going around different places and just trying that food and like jokingly uh, rated and shit. Okay, guys. Yeah. It was like Bourdain, but him. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. Guy but, it, but it's like yeah. Mark. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. being himself. You can't. Yeah. Be, you ain't from the. You didn't grow up in the hood, did you? I did. You grew up in the suburbs. Nah. Uh, oh, okay. Nah, nah. <laughs> I, I could. I, I was like my people so my mom her side of the family is from the hood but my okay. dad's side they not and i'm adopted too okay so my uh adopted family a lot of them are but i didn't meet them till i was like i guess you're talking about yeah. all these like artistic endeavors and i'm like man yeah. you ain't get you in the hood you, nah, <laughs> you don't it, get all that opportunity <laughs> not really but my mom was like she was real she's a she's pretty much the reason why i'm like into so much stuff because she took my creativity seriously yeah and she looked for ways to she made me read and write all the time, like during the summer. Like if I I was happy, like if I get out of school for the summer, I'm like, oh, we ain't got no book reports? Cool, I'm chilling. She'd be like, nah, read this book and then write a report about it. <laughs> so she stayed on my That's ass. That's what's up then. Yeah, I appreciate it. And um, so like anything, if I want, like I said, when I wanted to make the toy, she was like, all right, bet. So let's figure out how we can make it happen. So she's always allowed me to be creative. And then 
I was uh, I was fortunate enough to be in a program. One teacher recommended me for it. I went to France, Italy, and Malta for uh, so that kind of like just stuff like random stuff like that kept happening yeah. out of my control and allowed me to just broaden my horizons and stuff. So I. I can't really take a lot of credit for it. I'm just a crazy ass dude into a lot of shit, and <laughs> shit just be happening. So yeah, but your product of your environment, and it's your sure. environment expands. You know, yeah. you, get, you have a lot more opportunity. And I ain't like going outside either when I was young. Like you know, how everybody was outside. I was always inside, so that kind of helped too. Because if I was outside, I'd probably be in some bullshit. But yeah. I just like being by myself when I was young, so that helped too. What's your like? Just to explain to people if they don't know who you are, or whatever. What's, yeah. what's your comedy style like? How, how do you like to approach your sets? Like, you know, whether it's, you know, crowd work or, you mm -hmm. know, storytelling or, you know, what's your, what's your kind of, if you were explaining your style to someone? I, I love, I like crowd, I love crowd work because I like to be in the moment with stuff, but I also have, uh, I do a lot of storytelling. So I, I mix the two and um, I, I go about it in a, a unconventional way as far as comedy. If you do comedy, normally people say, write your jokes out and then keep working and keep working and working it. And like at open mics, it looks like, I tend to make it look like I'm not trying because I'll throw in stuff I'm working on on an actual set or an open mic. I do com I work the material that I'm working on inside the crowd work to see if it works that way. But um, it's mainly crowd work and, uh, and storytelling that's yeah. that's pretty much what it is well the other night i feel like did you would you just kind of shoot from the hip the other night or were you working on I something told too? two jokes that night yeah that's what I, I knew i knew one was in there yeah it, it seemed like you 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 had ready and right. then or was working on and then i knew the rest was like it just it just worked out perfect bro yeah, <laughs> those, those yeah. few liners appreciate like, it josh shared that shit and i saw it and i was like i gotta go find this video because i didn't know he was recording that y'all were going to record that set For sure. and i knew that was crowd work so i was like it's probably not material yeah, and yeah i was like man i gotta share that shit because it was hilarious dude. i'm not gonna say it i'm just gonna let if they want to look at it they can find it this yeah. shit was so funny bro I, I mean you just let the end it it's funny because i ran into a lady at a restaurant yesterday didn't know her but i'd seen her there prior and she'd seen my wife and i she came up to me and um it was last night actually and she was like hey who was that last guy? Or she was like, what did y'all think about the show? I was like, I mean, it was all right. I said, yeah. but, you know, he came in and kind of, you, you came in and took, you know, took sure. control and kind of ended with a bang. Nice. And she's like, what was his name? And she's like, how do, let me find him on Facebook. And I showed her how to find you and follow you. Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> that's hard, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, yeah. dude, it's just, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank um, you. We, we talk about comedy a lot on this thing, but I'll never get to talk to a comedian because there's not, they're not, there's not that many around here. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's just, I think, what, what Chris and I talked about, you know, on the last episode, it's just there hasn't been opportunity. And there's not opportunity. There's yeah. no way for anyone to kind of do anything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it, the, the comedy scene, it, it fluctuates. It's been fluctuating for the, like, past 10, 15 years. Because there's, like, people that's been doing it for, like, 20, 30 that stay here. And you wouldn't know it. And we have a comedy club, and a lot of people don't know about it because, well, there's, there's a lot of different issues with it. But it only markets to one demographic the most of the time. And um, what's that? What's that? It's like uh, mainly like thirty to sixty year old black people. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so that's most of the time that they market. Is this like old comedians too? They've been doing stuff forever. They're coming through here. Or uh, sometimes, like, yeah, kind of like comedians. mid level. Yeah, passing yeah. Through? Like uh, Rodney Perry and shoot, is Rodney Perry's been here? Dude from Martin Brumman has been here. Uh, Reginald Ballard. Um, what's the the white comedian's name who does a lot of black crowds? Uh, Gary, Gary Owen. Yeah, Gary. He came. He uh, his, actually he he roasted the comedy club and went viral for it. Nice. Like he's <laughs> he's gotten the owner of the club. He's gotten some pretty big names there, but it's just the marketing only reaches so far. You know what I'm saying? And that that's another thing. It's like we're so spread out, and a lot of the people that are good, they either stop doing it and they're working a regular job, or they just go outside of the city. Yeah, I mean, there's not. It's there's a lot of industries similar to yours. There's not like a lot of money in it starting out. Yeah, no. And, uh, and you're having to do a lot, a lot, a lot of sets to make a decent wage. Yeah. And then if you're trying to do, you know, especially if you're trying to do it full time, and not do anything else. And I can right. imagine if you're trying to do another full time job and you may get an opportunity, but then right. you can't take it because it's in the yeah. middle of the week somewhere. Right. right. It's two hours away, you know, yeah, or yeah. some shit. It just, I, it reminds me a lot of someone starting in the music industry and just, For you know, sure. kind of just. I feel like you got to find that you got to find your niche, mm -hmm. tap into it, and then just try to you know line yeah. everything up. Yeah, it's it's very hard too because like with artists, with music, comedy, or whatever, you have the purists, and then you have the people that like it kind of, but they just want to make the money first. So you can have somebody that'll just like tell generic easy jokes and don't want to tell any crass jokes and want to just do corporate work and want to do just um, 
just clean humor because you get paid more faster doing clean humor but a lot of times people don't gravitate towards that that like the art form and they don't want to sell out they don't want to feel like they're selling out so you could go just like with the mumble rap a lot of it people like i don't really want to do that but i'm trying to make some money so let me do that first but the people who like lyrical rap they're like i don't want to do that to sell out and the same thing happened with comedy it's way harder because like you said the peers well i I got a i got a job i got kids so i can't do it and then they just stop and it's, it's hard bro it's no money in it when you first start out it, no matter how funny you are and there's something to it like we're i think we're on an up up upswing now i feel like comedy's tapped again you know whether yeah. it be because the like joe rogan you know who right, has the largest right, right. podcast in the world right so he's putting them on all the time and that's great for the industry yeah. and i think it's bringing it up but also it just makes it way more competitive for you guys oh yeah, yeah because definitely. all eyes are on you and then people that's what i always i'm always conflicted about is people have like a Persona, they think that you need to have certain some, some type of persona. Mm-hmm. Maybe because if you're you're a black comedian, you have ex, this persona. If you're right. a white comedian, you know, or you're a Hispanic comedian, you got to have this persona. Right. And um, it is it is cool to see people mix it up because, you know, we have those staple people who've been you know done doing their styles for so long, but yeah. things change. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and crowds, it's crowds are more blended now than they used to be. Yeah. You know, I remember when I went and watched, dude. I went and watched Mike Epps. I don't know if you read that show here. But it was probably four, <laughs> four or five years ago, mm. and it was at the municipal. <laughs> I know why you laugh. <laughs> I know. Now nah, you finna find out. Oh, okay. Okay. go ahead. Yeah. Man. It was go at ahead. the municipal, and um, I, dude, there was five white people in the crowd. And I was really? one of them. Yeah, I felt nervous Damn. as fuck, bro. Oh, shit. I was, I was with a friend of mine. I looked up. I was like, "Hey, man, let's leave here early, right before the last bit." Because I, ain't, you know, what I mean, I yeah. just, it just was. I mean, it was. But yeah, I like nah, my gaps, you know. But sure. what, what was you laughing? About? I was gonna say. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> this is so so crazy. Um, so my gaps was beefing with uh, Kevin. Or they, you know, their beef was on and off again. And uh, this one time, like a week before this happened they were arguing and Mike Epps said Kevin Hart wasn't funny. So then like next week, uh, Drake had a song, I forgot the name of, but it's that Kiki, do you look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that song came out, a lot of people were doing dances to it. So they did the, ch- you know, when they would do the different dance challenges. Mike Epps did one and there's this uh, comedy website called Comedy Hype on Instagram, they posted his video. And he was making, he was trying to do like a skit and he got on a unicycle with some weave in his hand going to this girl Kiki house on the phone. He got on the unicycle and that was the bit. And I wrote in the comments just being funny because I talk shit in the comments all the time. And I was like, imagine saying Kevin Hart not funny, then getting on a unicycle. People in the comments were laughing at it. Then he saw it and he DM'd me and he was like, you'll never make it. (laughs) I was like, what? That's funny that I brought him (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I have, I actually just looked at it today. I went to my mom's house to get it uh, so I can take it back to Yeah, I framed, I took a screenshot of the DM and I framed it. And it's just like motivation to just keep going and shit. Do you post it like periodically? Yeah, I post it. And tag him? (laughs) I did, but I want to stop, I stopped doing it because I didn't want that to be a thing. Cause you know, people take it out of your hands when you post something and then now they want to be like, cause a lot of people came to me like yeah fuck my guy i'm like nah i think he's funny but i just thought it was funny that he said that shit i don't hate him well it's funny to me like i don't yeah. if you're a funny motherfucker and you're a comedian that's what you do for a living for sure and i feel like you hang out with other funny motherfuckers yeah. and they all talk shit to each other yeah why would somebody talk like well how are you in the comments do you talk shit in the comments back to everybody or do you just kind of let it ride uh it depends on what it is sometimes I mean, you, most of the time you're probably just fucking with people to get reaction right, right but not yeah. really taking it serious but yeah, i feel nah, like nah. going out of your way when you're a fucking a celebrity for sure a movie star a successful comic to 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 message someone who's just trying to do it <laughs> yeah. and, and attacking them like that bro it's like damn bro really yeah. i would but i mean i guess more. he was really uh he was probably hurt. He was pro- well. He's. I guess that shit with Kevin Hart was really fucking like yeah, bothering probably. him. What year was this? This was what, like twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, something like well, that. Well, he is a Maybe funny 18. motherfucker. I yeah. learned. He's one, of, he's one of my favorites. Man. I he learned though, bro. Don't meet your idols. When I met D Ray Davis, yeah, yeah. D Ray Davis is a fucking asshole, bro. For real, he's mean as fuck. He's wow. not a nice person. Damn, well, you gotta think too, man. But he's funny as fuck on stage. Yeah. But it's like, don't yeah. just don't like. Damn. If I can help it, yeah. I'm gonna just. Like I just dap up. Like if I see somebody, like I like their work, or whatever. I'm like, hey, right. man, I like your work. I just leave. But you just gotta remember that, yeah. like you. I guess you gotta think about these people get fucking 
hounded all the fucking yeah, time. Yeah, you know? so and like, then again, though, I mean, I met Drew Brees, and he was one of the nicest yeah, people. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, but it might be that. It might so, be that. You know what I'm saying? The crazy like, thing about that, day, It might be, you know, Yeah, yeah, time. that's what I was going to say. The crazy thing about that is Drew Brees could be an asshole, but he just trained to be nice, and you could have met D-Ray on a fucked up day. And because, like, I done snapped on people. I done snapped on my mom before and didn't mean it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he just caught me when I was pissed off. So. And you never know, man. Yeah, you never know. But I, I do, I do yeah. feel you, though, because like, there's a the thing uh, – Cause I get scared Cause I really fuck With Tom Segura yeah. And I did a couple things Cause uh, I made a fake video yeah. Of you, you seen that shit yeah. I made a fake video Of um, I was watching him On a podcast Okay And cause I consume A lot of like If I like a comedian I consume every interview And all kind of shit That's funny Because Chris and I Were talking And he said oh, yeah. It was the exact opposite He don't oh. listen to anything For He's real. afraid he may It may go into his well, Fucking up his There's that too But even if you yeah. don't do that Comics think alike right. You might have the same right. So yeah. But um I, w- I was watching an interview and he was talking about how he uh how he met the undertaker by trying to buy some workout equipment somebody linked him with a guy named mark so i, I heard i heard about yeah i heard about i heard the story yeah yeah so i saw i took the clip of him because it looked like he was on the iphone so i took the clip of him saying what's up mark and then i put that on my and i made it look like i was talking to him and then i told everybody i was just joking and it's uh i forgot why i was bringing this up we were talking Somebody about your eyes. Oh, oh yeah, me yeah. So it's like I did a lot of stuff because I fuck with his podcast. So I do a lot of graphic design and stuff as a fan. But then I think about like, man, I don't want to make this dude feel like I'm weird before he meet me. Like, because I'm going to Austin, so I could try to get in that circle. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want him to see me like, oh, it's the weird dude from the internet. <laughs> no, think bro, he's funny. I think he. I think well, he, he probably think that's funny. funny. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the thing though. Like, and I don't think I could ever do stand up, but I just feel like that. I try to take everything in and talk to people, and I give right. honest feedback. And For I, sure. you know, I, I fuck, I, I enjoy comedy. Like I really do. And then yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the structure of it. I'm not right. like the whole time you're doing stuff. I'm like, how do you set that up? How yeah, do you do that? You yeah, know, yeah. I like how that, you know, we brought that back at the end, kind of thing. Sure. He said that was did, did he have something else playing, kind of thing like that. But yeah. I feel like all comedians that I've interacted with and that I see from afar, they don't take nothing seriously, man. Not, I like, mean, yeah, yes and no. It dep- and it really depends on the person too, because you would think like I'm the type of person when I get off stage, I'm not the same all the time. Like I don't like to, I don't mind talking to people after I get off. But there's some people they're drunk and they're having fun, but then they want to throw fifty jokes at you, and now you got to do this thing back and forth. And I really just got is off. Is this work. backstage or is this in no, the crowd? Like, like if we like in the crowd, like okay. if we do like Tiki Bar for right. example. Like I don't mind talking to people I know, but sometimes. Well, Tiki Bar is a bad example because usually I know what I'm going to get there and I'm having fun. Yeah. But, like, I've done shows where it's not a green room. Like, as soon as I get off stage, I'm amongst everybody. Right. And now people come and had a good time and now they want to joke and then it just feels weird now because I'm But like, they're not comedians. Exactly. But I'm talking about just like, comedians oh, on comedians. comedians. Yeah. Like, if we talking, yeah. we sometimes we get serious cause okay. we, but but it all depends but some people don't know when to stop joking yeah as as a comedian they want to joke all the time and some comedians <laughs> like i'm done i just want to go home so it, you get it but it's i think it's more or less of a, a level-headed thing if you're a level-headed per- person whether you do comedy or not you can know okay he's probably joking um i'm not gonna take this serious or looking at the context of what's going on and that's an important thing too and some people you never know what they triggered by either so it's one minute you think you can joke with somebody that might be a crazy person he was like i didn't know this person had schizophrenia and he's just snapping on me <laughs> for no reason so I, I, you never really know but yeah mike Epps was tripping <laughs> yeah he was tripping well yeah the, fuck I, mike Epps. <laughs> oh, man, dude. look i think i think that, that's good i mean that's just yeah. good marketing for you you know yeah, it is what it is sure, one day sure. and it's good motivation man to, yeah, yeah. to have someone tell you you can't do something especially if someone you idolize yeah that either will destroy you right. or or light a fire yeah, under your ass. You got to be one sure. to, one person the other, and it's apparent you're the other. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, I, I can only imagine somebody like you're fucking with them, talking shit, and and yeah. then they shit on you, and you're like, man, yeah. I liked you, you yeah. know. But at least you still respect those people because I mean, sure. you never know. Mm-hmm. But I think I think about stuff all the time when I'm like hear like hear things or there's a certain scenario, and I'm like, damn, that would make a good bit. Yeah. Like, how do you build up your bits? Uh, a lot of it comes from either I'm thinking of something stupid. I either make up a completely false story because I thought it's a funny scenario, okay. and I'm just like, how do I get this and build a joke? Or um, if something actually happened that I think is hilarious, I'll tell the story, but I'll take away an ad to make it more funny or more absurd. Um, and then uh, if it's not that, then I'm just on crowd, I'm doing crowd work and just making fun of whatever's in the room. Are you constantly consuming what's going on? 
like yeah. to get material for like sure. yeah. anything that's going on in pol- like do you touch politics do you fuck with that or you, you, you I do you, if I if I feel I touch anything if I okay. feel like I find some funny in it <clears throat> I don't just read the newspaper like how can I make that funny I just like you read the newspaper no I'm saying I don't <laughs> I don't just read but, the newspaper yeah, nah. do they still have one shit <laughs> probably to clean dog shit or something I don't know <laughs> uh, but yeah like you know I don't I don't sit and look at I read right. different things, but I don't do it to find something. I just so I just let it all flow. If I happen to see something, then I'm a I'm a touch on it. Well, and do you layer that? Because I I'm telling you, I'm a nerd when it comes to shit. Because I'm just trying to I'm always trying to figure out how people take information in and then regurgitate it yeah. and spit it out yeah. and try to be somewhere in the middle and not be too offensive. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. And then also make sure it's funny and that you know like all those you have all people don't understand that there's all those elements that come into play. Right. But like how do you layer that stuff? Do you layer it around other types of jokes or how's that built in? It Or do you even get, go into depth like that? I do. It depends on what it is though. Uh and sometimes stuff just uh just happens, you know, like you might think one way and then you do it and then you hear it and you're like, "Oh, that actually meant something else." So now I can build something around that. And a lot of joke building is you have the thought, you write out what you think, and then you go to the open mic, and then you try it. Mm. If it works, you build on that. If it doesn't work, you take away and add, and you just keep telling it over. A lot of comedians don't want to tell the same jokes over and over again, but at some point, you're going to have to, or you're just going to have to be really good and really funny fast. That's a lot of, and that's another thing I've noticed that you, you're off the cuff. That's yeah. that's a whole other art in itself. Yeah. To be sure. able to talk shit to people immediately and not run out of the shit talking, you right, know what I mean? Right, yeah. It, Especially it, if you're moving, you know, moving through the weeds and being able to operate on the fly. I mean, that's just know. that's something that's completely different than writing. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, and they, blend they them both together. hard. And I, I hear a lot of people saying like they'll try to shit on either one of them based on what they do and be like, oh, well, I don't write because I'm a this or I don't, I don't go up there and just talk because I write. And it's like, I think you take the craft seriously, but then when you begin to talk like that, I feel like you're doing it for the wrong reason. It's just going back to like building jokes. I look for the funny first. If it's mm-hmm. funny, I'm gonna say it. I'm not trying to. I'm not because we all know I'm not trying to offend you when I'm on stage because we have the context of it being in the room. Now, if I'm on the street yelling out some crazy shit, then it's like okay, something's wrong with this man because the the context is I'm like a street preacher now and I'm trying to tell y'all how I actually feel. A lot of the shit I say on stage, I don't actually feel that way. Like I got a comment on the the video you were talking about when I was joking about the credit score, the black man with a white woman. <laughs> yeah. I just because I know that's a trope. Yeah. Like there, there's a trope that black dudes get with white women, and sometimes it's funny to say that his he's doing better now that yeah. he has a white woman. But I don't actually think that all black people have bad credit. <laughs> Somebody kind of was like, not all white people like bland food. I'm like, yeah, I know, not all black people are poor. It's just like that's the point of the joke. It's absurd. It's, it's a trope. A joke, it's just, I'm just joking. It's a joke. But I, I think the funny part about that show is that that one woman that ever like that was fucking he- the heckler. Yeah, yeah, yeah That yeah. was drunk. That was it felt the need crazy to talk. Bitch. Yeah, the crazy yeah. bitch. So well, I felt like the dude she was with, like he's just like, man, he's just like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. You know, like every time she opens her mouth, I, I just see him cringing. Like, man, that's that's a whole other fucking thing. Have you ever, uh, has anyone ever fucked with you and try to like whoop your ass after for fucking talking shit to him like during the mm-hmm. set or something? Nah, but I had a, a very angry black lady mad because she was trying to make the show about her. Like her table, it was her birthday. That's what that girl, woman was doing the other yeah, night. Yeah, it was crazy. And she, I don't even think she was drunk yet. But she got offended because what happened was it was her birthday and they reserved a table at the comedy club and they were sitting in the front and uh, there were, we were opening up me and another lady, um, Queen Cass, she's a comedian, and we were opening up, I forgot who we were opening up for, but she went first, and I could tell, because I like to watch and see what's going on, I could tell then that that table was going to be a problem, because I had done it so much, I can tell what's going to happen. And I knew they were talking, and they were having fun, but they were drinking, and they were talking too much. And it messed her set up, so I already knew to expect that when I got up there. And then I got up there and I was doing my thing and then the lady started saying something and I was like, I forgot how exactly how it happened, but I ended up calling her a bitch and she stood up. <laughs> and she was like, I am not a bitch. I'm like, well, you're not making a good case for yourself right now. <laughs> she ain't like that shit. After she was trying to make me sing happy birthday to her and all this shit, making me apologize. She went to the club owner and was like, can you uh, make him do this? He's like, I'm not doing that, bro. You at a comedy show. And it was another, some other ladies, they got mad at me for something I didn't say. Somebody in the crowd said, old lady titties, and some old women was in the back, and they tried to get me kicked out. And I was like, I ain't even say this shit. <laughs> so y'all mad at me for nothing. But did, I mean, are y'all listening to each other's set, like, before you're about to go out and know that that's going to be a problem when you go out? Or do you, or do you, or just, like, if you're at a bigger club where you can't hear the set, maybe do they come back and say, hey, 
look, sometimes there's a yeah, heckler yeah. right here there's some drunk asshole like yeah, this yeah. may be a problem stay away from this you know kind of thing yeah, yeah. sometimes they do if, it depends on how it's set up because not every place has a green room right you might you know, might be in a bathroom or some shit yeah. just waiting for the show to start <laughs> sometimes you inside it in the back waiting for it so but if you can if you can't hear sometimes a comedian will let you know and some people don't even want to know anything they want to be completely surprised but i like comedy so much i want to watch the whole show until up until i'm about to get on does it change how you perform as the show progresses like do you think do you have these because i'm thinking this shit too man i'm telling you i'm mm. thinking all this shit yeah it's like you see this show going one direction and you thought it was going to go another way and you had these jokes planned. Yeah. Do, do you pull some more out, like a rabbit out of the hat and go a different direction if you see that opportunity? For sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, but I'm I'm so bad. Like, I'm... It works out because I'm fortunate enough to be as, I guess, witty on stage and, like, just spur the moment. But, um... Usually, I don't plan what I'm going to say until, like, maybe anywhere from, like, 30 minutes well I'll say about an hour to five minutes before I get on stage sometimes I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna say but I'm just go up here and I have jokes in the roller decks that I can pull out and then sometimes something might happen and I can weave in and pick something out that happens in the room and pick on that and then bring it back to my set so it just really depends but I, I don't I prepare technically weeks or months in advance by writing a joke and having the material ready just so one day I might be at a show tomorrow night and I just put that on. You know what I'm saying? I don't prepare for it specifically for that night. So you just fill it out and if yeah, it fits in, much, you yeah. just work it in. For sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. There's just uh there's so many layers to it and people yeah. don't to realize and that's why I ask all these questions. Sure. And some people may be like, Who gives a fuck, man? He's funny, tell tell him tell some jokes, you yeah, know. Yeah. But, but I don't think it's about that. I think it's it's an art form. It's for just sure. like anything else. It's like yeah. music or anything else. Like people I think need to know what makes it so important. Also what I think people need to know is that I mentioned this on the last show with Chris but I'm mentioning again here is like you need to know that this is not your living room yeah. when you go into the you, it's different taking the information in in a crowd is different than it is you sitting in the living room you know right. what I mean Facts. and and it's funny because the crowd reaction will like inherently make your reaction you know what mm -hmm. I mean because if right. the crowd starts laughing mm -hmm. and I didn't think it was that funny but then it's like fuck everyone yeah, and, exactly. it, and it just plays on each other exactly. you know what I mean and, that, it, and it works that's a good point uh, it's something that I noticed because just like you can I, I like having these conversations I'm, I'm glad that you are such a nerd with it because these conversations I love talking about comedy so much and uh, it's a good point that you just brought up like if you didn't like you'll hear somebody say something but then somebody laugh and then you'll hear it different after they laugh and I feel like that kind of laugh puts it in a better context you'll be like oh because I was kind of half listening then they're laughing and then I play it back in my head and I'm like oh I get the joke now that's happened to me so many times just being in the audience where I didn't laugh at first until everybody else laughed and then it made me get the joke yeah so and I the more that, intimate the setting like the more people for sure. get involved and it's like you're you're all one unit, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of working together. But if yeah. you're in your living room, kids screaming, trying yeah, to eat, yeah. fucking with your, you know, whatever, fucking with your phone, you're not, if you laugh at something on TV, it's got to be really fucking funny. You know facts, what I mean? But facts. if you're in those crowds, you can, you can just pick up a lot more, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. reaction from something. I am, in my experience of being in the crowd, you know what I mean? I've never yeah. been on the other side of it, but I, I would just imagine like it all works together and you all play off each other. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. kind of just kind of trying to, I guess, drive the, drive the car, you know, yeah. But what's your what's your ideal set? Like, what? Do you, how long do you like to go? Oh man, uh, so my ideal set, shit. If the environment is right, which it usually pretty much is, I I don't even keep track of time as long as I can go. Cause as soon as I get off the stage, I want to go back up. <laughs> so I've done like. So you're never dreading to go up. Oh ever. hell no! Not even if it, not following a shit show or not being in front of. Are you ever in front of big headliners? Does that make you nervous? No, it doesn't okay. make me nervous. The thing that make. <laughs> I gotta. Uh, I, I hope it's funny. It's funny to me. It wasn't funny when it happened, but um, I was booked to so this guy. So this guy came by with me and me and Clyde Williams, another comedian. Uh, we had this show we did called Don't Die, and it was kind of like half comedy, half open mic, and we like to do like uh, it was kind of like a variety show a little bit. And um, this guy came by when we were setting up, and he was famous on TikTok and Instagram for doing like voices. He could do voices real well. He came by. And uh, we exchanged information. And then maybe a year later, he hit me up and said he was starting his tour. He's like, I want you to open up for me. I'm going to start in Shreveport at the LOL Comedy Club. And so he's like, yeah, I want you to do like 15 minutes or something like that. And uh, I was like, cool. So then 
like a week later, he hit me up and he's like, hey man, this is so-and-so. I'm headlining and I want to make sure you're doing my show. And I'm like, that's weird that you just told me something I already knew. But yeah, I'm still doing it. And he was like, all right, cool. Well, you still got 15 minutes and I need it to be clean. I'm like, what the fuck? We should have talked about that when you booked me. I would have said how, no. How, how close the show was? The next day. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not. Well, I was like, I'll try to do clean. Because normally I wouldn't try to do it. But I'm like, you know, if I, let me well, see. It's if at I the comedy it. club. Why would he want it clean? Because he's that type of comedian. Okay. So, oh, so if it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And so we get there. And as I'm walking to the venue, I see another fellow comedian, Tanja D. And she like, hey, nephew. I call her like my comedy, ain't it? So she's like, hey, nephew. I was like, oh, you coming to the show? She's like, nah, Derek Keener's got a show tonight. I'm like, nah, that's tomorrow. She's like, no, it's tonight. So they were double booked. Both headliners oh, were double booked. Fuck. So I get there and I find out that they're still going to do the show. They're putting it together. And the other guy's going up, then me, then the guy I'm opening up for. Terrible mistake. Well, was the other guy dirty? Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Extremely. <laughs> so we get there and it, it's packed house. And uh, I'm nervous because I'm like, bro, there's no way I'm about to be clean and just eat shit. So then the guy, Derek Keener, goes up and he does amazing. He's supposed to do 15 minutes open the show. He does 37 minutes. Then I get up. As I'm about to go up, he finds somebody I'm actually related to who has two husbands. Well, two men that she's dating. And they're both here at the table. So he's spending 20 minutes talking to them, got the best material. That should have been for me. <laughs> if I would have went up first, I would have cleaned house because I'm like, this is the perfect thing for a comedian to see. But he's doing it, so I can't really touch that. I get up, I'm telling my jokes, and I got a joke about um, uh, cougars. And I started off, I'm like, you know, anybody mess with cougars? Nobody says shit. And I'm like, all right. Anybody? And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm like panicking. I'm like, what do I say? And I say it again, so I try to get somebody to say something. So I'm like, anybody mess with cougars? And I see two dudes in the background talking. So I'm like, hey, hey, y'all. Y'all mess with cougars? Dude goes, hey, man, yeah, man. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> I bombed for 15 minutes straight, oh, bro. It shit. was the worst ever. I I I never I'd do it again, <clears throat> but I didn't like the way that was set up. But and did you and did you try to stay clean too? Fuck no. Oh, I, I was about to say, as, damn. Mm -mm. As soon as Derek got off stage, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm I haven't talked to the dude that booked me or nothing. Like I know I didn't even try. I was like, bro, I know I done fucked your shit up. And well, how did he do after you? I heard that he did good for oh, so what he was. Oh, you just rolled out. Yeah, no, I had another show. I had another show, so I had to get out. Yeah, nah. But I probably would have left afterwards. Yeah. yeah. But no, nah, I had another show to do. But I actually did good. That the second show, I was regular, regular. But before, I, I ate shit. But that's how it is, bro. You never know. But that's I think what determines if you're a good comedian or not, because you can have the shitty nights. And you probably have them first. But if you keep going, that I think that's what makes a solid comedian. You keep going because you, the love for the game is so much. Well, it seems to be that there's so much um, like childhood trauma associated with comedy yeah, or something yeah. like. Do you have that? Like, oh, for you, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's, what's your like? What's your play uh, on that? Shit. So, um, there's a lot of depression in there. Um, I was the only child, and there's a lot of just shit. Like, you know, as a parent, you you do your best as a parent. You try to do your best, but you may not do something perfect or you may think you're doing the best, but it might fall short and you don't know how that affects your kids. So it's a little bit of that. And then like, my, like I said, my parents have done the best job they can, but they're still like, everything's not gonna be perfect. So there was a lot of, um, I don't even know how to ex explain it really, just, I, I'm a, a very expressive person and like a lot of times in a in a black household for sure like you and it's really a south, southern thing you you can't talk back and like if i tell you to do something i don't want to hear none of that i extra don't know question yeah no, no questions the, i don't <laughs> care like how that you in feel. my household too sure. <laughs> it's like it they, we ain't trying to hear none of that like yeah. i got these bills to pay you you shit and piss in a diaper i've cleaned you you ain't got no say so in none of this <laughs> shit. i don't care about none of that <laughs> yep. so like but as you grow up it affects you two different ways you can just be like I'm gonna go this way with it, but you had no, you don't have no control over that. So there was a lot of stuff I didn't realize it affected me until I got older. I got diagnosed with depression, trying to go in about my ADD, and then the doctor was like, "Oh, you don't have this. It's you suffering from depression and this, that, and the third. So um, it's a lot to get into, um, but there's there's a lot of childhood trauma, but. There's a lot of comedians that also don't have that. They're just funny people. It's funny. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So Yeah, that's I've just heard that and I've, yeah, I've noticed yeah. some people I know that you know and for sure. That especially like the class were you the class 
clown in school? No, I was you quiet. Weren't. You I was quiet. quiet. So shit, it shit. just started coming out later. Yeah, for sure. Like I, when I get comfortable with people, because I was very shy. But then when I would get comfortable with people, that's when people learn I was funny. Because okay. I was like slick funny. Okay. And I was very sarcastic and shit. Because we all had them friends that like. Oh yeah. yeah. That was that was a funny motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You just knew he was gonna be a comedian. For sure. One of yeah. the first things I bonded with him over at work was we. I figured out he liked Chappelle. Like really, yeah. really liked Chappelle. Yeah. And then we were quoting Chappelle shit. This oh, motherfucker man. has a, a goddamn. He has a biography or, or, or dictionary or something with quotes. Like he will hit oh, you yeah. with the quote, and I'm yeah. like, and he'll tell me the movie. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I remember yeah, that. In my brain, but, yeah. but he can remember yeah. that shit, yeah. and he does it to all the time. Bro, he like the like, television <laughs> or like a jukebox or something, bro. He, yeah, he man, funny. I just I, I can remember what you're saying, but I'm like, shit. where the fuck was that? How yeah. do you remember that shit? Like bro. verbatim. I wish I was like that, man. That, that's <laughs> why don't you do it? Why don't you do stand up? Uh, look, man, I got I got plenty of shit written. I'm just too, I'm too scared, bro. <laughs> get drunk, just get drunk. And <laughs> I can't, dude. I can't even really drink no more, man. For real. I tried like last yeah. podcast we did. I could. Yeah. Well, how much that margarita I had? Like literally that much. Yeah, you had. Man, a I was before, sick, like yeah. I was sick. For like real? I was fucking sick. Oh, yeah. do crack. I don't know. Do something. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> uh, yeah, do some mojo. Yeah. Get, get up there, have a fucking heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like for real. That'd be a last shot. Like this, is the joke. The yeah. joke, I'm finna fucking die on stage right now. Uh, I laugh. No. I get one laugh. No, I'm just Will you, no. uh, do you drink? Oh, yeah, yeah. Too much sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, for sure. See, I was thinking about getting some alcohol on this podcast, but I'm, I have a competition coming up a week and a half. I'm like, I, I just got to quit for Oh, a what while. kind of competition? A CrossFit. CrossFit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, We're shit. We're doing a big one down here at the convention. Uh, yeah. Why, guys? This is a real big regional competition. But it'll this will be airing probably right before that happens. But, yeah, it... So we we do have a good time on this podcast. Normally we drink a little bit, yeah, you know. Okay. Especially yeah. we have this we have a segment where this the whole series called Tequila Talk, and me and two of my Hispanic homies come in here and oh, shit. you know Jose from Seven Tap and the other boy yeah. Ben. Um, yeah. We come in here and we just drink tequila and talk shit. That's oh, all that's we do. That's all we do for like yeah. two and a half three hours. Man, and uh, cool. but dude, I've I peeled it way back because I've been training for this. Gotcha. And, we were, you know, me and, and the wife are having a couple cocktails every week, you know, yeah. like two or three nights a week. I'm like, fuck, I need to, you know, peel it back some. So, like, right yeah. now, if I even smell alcohol, I'm like half, half buzz, bro. It oh, don't yeah. take much. But yeah. what do you drink? Man, anything. I don't have, I don't have like, a go-to. Like, I, I, like, if I'm just chilling, I might get, like, a, a Heineken or a, just a go-to. Like, if I can't, I don't know if I'm a, either Heineken or a Blue Moon or just, like, something if I just want to drink, but I don't want to. But I try anything, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm the same way with food. I try anything twice. Will you um except dick? Do you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying just, <laughs> we on the internet, man. <laughs> I tried that once. I ain't doing that again. <laughs> That's what he said. They, no, what uh? What, do you go? Do you do sets drunk? You, oh, I you have. have one two drinks. Do you do better when you're drunk. You looser. You seem to be like. You seem to be like you would just be in your element sober. Yeah, I, but I had to get to that because like at first I got scared because I was like, damn, am I only funny drunk? Uh, Cause I've tried weed before sets, and I will never do that again. Do you but smoke? I don't, I don't smoke no more anyway. Yeah, I but can't hardly do that either. I don't fuck with it. But um, looking for a new ride? I got the spot for you. SBC Autos is the premier auto dealer in North Louisiana. Whether you're shopping for that first car for your kid, looking for that primo luxury ride, a new truck for work and play, or even that custom classic car, they're not your cookie cutter dealership. Service and quality is second to none. Flexible finance options, master service techs on site best reviews in the area, family owned and operated. You just can't beat them. No hassle, no BS, sbcautos.com. Look them up now. Yeah, it, one or two beers, I'm usually in a good mood, but then I still also try to make sure that I can do it sober too. And I've, I've gotten, so it doesn't really matter as long as I'm ready before I get on stage, drink sober or not, I'm cool. But Do you touch race and the all the shit going on with the fucking gay and straight yeah. you touch all that shit yeah, so you, I got, you don't I care had, you do it all I, if it's funny I'm gonna talk about it because I, I know at the same time I, I feel confident in saying whatever on stage because I know where my head and my heart is I don't have no hate for anybody and I understand everybody or I try to you know what I'm, saying? I'm a very understanding person and I usually can understand both sides of any argument and see why both parties are upset with shit and I think that helps with my comedy as well because I could find a joke in both sides so if you if you talk about Trump I can find funny shit for and against him to right. talk about you right. know what I'm saying because I actually have a Trump joke where I, I flip it you don't know where I'm going and I flip it but I like to be like Andrew Schultz uh, you know Andrew oh, yeah. Schultz oh, yeah. so he his philosophy on comedy is he stay he's ambiguous on his side 
and that way he's funny because you don't know which side he's taking and now i'm less political and you don't get drowned in that which i i kind of respect but even with that i don't have to be mysterious because i can also express how i feel about something yeah. so i don't lean a certain way it's just i'm looking at the situations individually but i've had i've had friends that are part of the uh lgbt community that told other friends of mine that they were mad at a joke that i posted that i tell but it's they don't you can tell a lot of people don't listen to what you're saying they hear buzzwords and they get mad at that yeah, and true. then yeah. that they don't figure out because a lot of the jokes are uh, if it's not about me at my own like what's the word if at my own detriment like if yeah. it's a joke on me attached to a subject they don't even realize i'm talking about myself based around the whatever community or whatever thing that's what it is a lot of time but then even too i make fun of everybody yeah. because if i can't if you can't make fun of one person then that means they're either beneath you or above you but you can't also say we're all equal in this that and the third but then also we're like oh we can't touch that subject just be funny and then like have have something to say don't just try to be oh i'm crass for no reason but it's not funny. It, just have something to say and be funny. That's yeah. that's all it is. <clears throat> what was that? <clears throat> no, what was that? We were talking about on that last show with Chris too. That was that. Is these? Uh, they talked about the ancient people in whatever tribe or civilization, basically mm. saying that if there's something, if there's not anything you can joke about, then yeah. you're taking yourself absolutely too serious, and there's a problem. For sure. Or there's something wrong in between. Inherently, yeah. if everyone's getting offended about everything, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's a bigger issue at play. For but sure. I think the most important thing is that. Most of the time, when people catch those buzzwords and run with it, yeah. they are they're looking for something and they don't have any context. So if they for don't sure. have any context. They just mm -hmm. grab something and run with it, yeah. and that's an easy way to quote unquote be canceled because sure. because so many people will do that. On the mm -hmm. other side of it, if you have a comedian that's hard right or hard left, mm -hmm. they never get themselves an opportunity to grow. For sure. You're just going to be stuck in that crowd for fucking ever. For sure. If you sign that check, that's yeah. where you're at. And I've seen that too, and it's like man, it's it's frustrating, and it's it's like that with any type of industry mm -hmm. like i just i don't see the the need in picking a side to be against another side especially if it's going to be a career and you really don't feel that way you're just doing it because that's how right. your trajectory is kind of pointing you know what for i mean sure. yeah you yeah, know i agree i think well here's here's my two cents for all that's concerned and i agree like i agree with what y'all are saying and to elaborate on that i feel like um well okay for example like how one third of people have an inner monologue and two thirds of people walking around and there's no fucking voice in their head. Yeah. Like, uh, that's not one of mine. Me and my wife talk about that. For real? Yeah. No. Dang. Okay. I just think about things, but I don't have a voice talking to me, telling me those things. Where? And we broke that shit all down one night and I was like, she's like, I have a voice telling me in my head. Like, I don't have a voice saying. Well, you're more impulsive then, which is good in a way. Yeah. It can be good in a way. Yeah. I think what that relates to though, because I don't think that's mutually exclusive necessarily with intelligence. Right. But at the same time, I feel like, well, not I feel like, I know for a fact that because of the information overload that we've ex experienced since the turn of the well, the turn of the millennium, not the turn of, well, turn of the century, but the new millennium. Um, David Bowie talked about this in an interview in 1998 with uh, BBC, in which um, spitting out timestamps and see what yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> and, uh, in which um, he he was uh, which you know you know like Bowie sort you know he's like he's like I, I feel like what we're experiencing right now is completely unprecedented. Yeah. You know like doing that whole deal and then of course you know the guy like on BBC he's like looking at him because it's Bowie he's like this drug head motherfucker but then it's like Bowie's like no seriously he's like I don't think he's like the internet's not just a tool he's like it's something that's going to change humanity I'm paraphrasing but basically he said along the lines of it's something that's going to change humanity mm. forever and he didn't say whether or not it'd be good or bad because he can't really tell the future he just knew that it was going to be extremely impactful on humanity i think right. it's been impactful in good ways and bad ways the bad way is the fact that with all the information that we're intaking i feel like a lot of people a lot more people are fucking dumb now yeah let's just be real about sure. it cut yeah. and dry people are not as intelligent as they used to be because there are so many different options avenues you can get stuck on a fucking like on a tangent watching TikToks for fucking eight hours straight in bed all day if you wanted right. to, which a lot of people do with their off time. Sure. So is that really educational? Are you really learning shit? Really what that's doing is shortening your attention span to 30 to 60 fucking seconds. Right. So whenever I feel like so many people are so much more outraged about shit now because they don't know the facts about everything yeah. and they can't look at things like you're saying from a standpoint of, well, I understand this point because... I have a broad sense of like 
people don't even understand like basic concepts of sociology mm-hmm. like these people like there is a tribe mentality within humanity that's how yeah. we fucking survive for as long as we did right like that's why we survived and the fucking neanderthals didn't right you feel what i'm saying mm-hmm. like that's and it, at the same time, people still have like Neanderthal genes, but there ain't fucking Neanderthals walking around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, with that mindset, it's like if we didn't have that pack mentality, if we didn't have that communal uh, communal mentality, we wouldn't exist. But people don't even understand those basic concepts of humanity. They're just stuck in these little bubbles on their fucking phones. Yeah. And then it's like, like you said, these keywords like. Oh well, that affects me. You see that shit in film all the time. It's depicted. It's like these guys, this little core group's laughing over here, and then they'll hear something and be like, "Hey, that affects us," <laughs> and then now they're fucking mad. Yeah. It's like, yeah. but that's literally like what people do, and it's just like, bro, like mm. that, that's like the the whole a- ambiguity. Yeah, that's the word. The whole like the ambiguous aspect of I think of being an entertainer, really being in any position of influence, whether. You're doing what I'm doing and doing what you're doing. I mean, I feel like it is good to be ambiguous, but I, I don't even think it's necessarily with the, because I know y'all well enough. I don't even think the people sitting at this table, it's about us being ambiguous. It actually is the fact that we do understand so many different viewpoints, so many different walks of life, right. because we have to interact with those people on a daily basis because it's our fucking job, one. Yeah. But two, because we're not closed-minded. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like in those positions, though, it is important to have that and to be ambiguous by nature about your viewpoints but also i feel like being too far right or too far left or too stuck in one way of thinking also just makes you well kind of a one-dimensional person yeah yeah. and that's uh i just said a lot of shit put a cherry on top of that shit (laughs) (laughs) for real i i uh it's it's a lot of different like I think in American culture, bro, it's like we have one. We have so many subcultures, right? And like, cause individualism has taken the the forefront of every American person. So we're all everybody's trying to we're trying to survive, and the best way to survive is to look out for self. So I don't align with these people because they can't help me and they can't protect me because they don't think like me. Mm-hmm. So it's all survival. And then now we don't have time to do shit because if you do, if you pursue the shit that you love, if it's not making money, then you can only do it a little bit, if at all, because you have to work. You either have to get a really good job or get several jobs and then you don't have time for nothing. And then if you have a spouse and kids, you don't have time for yourself. And then you don't have time to think about shit. And if you're trying to survive, you're only thinking about what's going to make me feel better and be better. Right. Anything else. So if, if you're only, if you got a 30 minute lunch break and you got 30 minutes to see what's happening in the news and all the news publications, uh, they get their money by buzzwords and short yeah. to the point things that make you think something. Uh, you only have 30 minutes and you got to eat and you got to get your mind right to go back to work. So you reading this little headline. You don't even read the headline. You read the headline then you go to the comments to see what people are saying and you have some people that have fake deep stuff. So not well thought out. Just yeah. use good words in my feelings and then you read that. Like, oh, that makes sense. But now you're not even using critical thinking because you're going with what somebody else said and you're not looking at the big picture. Me and my girl, we were talking and she, she gets these like headlines sent to her in the email. And she sent me something about Taco Bell. This dude's uh, suing Taco Bell for false advertising. Okay. But the way the headline set up, because she doesn't like Taco Bell. She's like, eats healthy and shit. So I love Taco Bell. I, <laughs> I love it. But um, we always make jokes about me eating and she doesn't like it. And she showed me this headline. And I knew that she thought from the headline that it was saying that he was suing because the meat's not real. Because that's the way they dressed it up. But I actually read the article, and I was, he wasn't suing it because of the food. It's because the picture didn't match what he got. Yeah. So he was suing because of how they advertised it, uh, how the photo looked. And he was like, this is not what I ordered. I look like I got a piece of shit, but y'all made it look beautiful. Mm-hmm. But it's just like that little instance happens so much because you have your bias. Yeah. Then you see a headline. Then it's like, oh, I don't have to read that because I know what they're saying. Fuck Taco Bell. Yeah. You, know well, what you walk in with an opinion. You exactly. Walk, but here's the thing. There's, there's, there's a problem with self-entitlement. We all For know sure. that. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's another thing. We've done it to our fucking selves. So we're complaining yeah. about a problem that we created. Hell yeah. And then you walk into something biased with an opinion For because sure. there's an echo chamber yelling this and you got yeah. you need to feel important. So you side with that, whoever that is, with that opinion because it makes you feel better because then it makes you feel like you're part of something. Just yeah. like the kids in high school that... 
they joined the cool crew even though they mm. really didn't have the same mentality yep. but it made them feel more accepted for survival sure. and th- it is literally the exact same thing and it's, it's it's human nature but at the same time we are not built to touch this many people for sure when yeah. we say something mm-hmm. there should be no, no more than a couple hundred people hear it yeah yeah the when we do say something now mm-hmm. millions can hear it yeah. and there's going to be all different waves of um you know reactions comments and yeah. not all of them are going to align with your beliefs and your opinions and how you uh you know put information out and how you take in information yeah. and so people don't know what to do with that and <laughs> yeah. it's it's an issue we've created ourselves the internet's yeah. the best and worst thing that was ever created 100%. best with you know what we've done in society how we're going to grow things yeah. how we're going to you know make be become more efficient but at the same time it's made us all battle each other for sure and it's also made us you know intertwined better too so it's right, just right. there's a lot of elements and and i don't think you know i think a lot. I don't want to go into conspiracy shit, but I don't want to get this the thing fucking shut down. But the thing is, is like I, I think that there's there's always powers that be that want to pull strings and yeah. they know how to manipulate things. They've been doing it forever. Um, yeah. Whether it's media, marketing, whatever. If there's a message they want out, they're gonna put it out and they're gonna they're gonna you know mm-hmm. utilize someone to do it. Yeah. And they're also that's gonna be the person that goes down with it too. For sure. I mean, it's it. I, I think all the issues that we deal with, specifically in America, a lot of this shit always trades back to somebody's making money off of it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's always been that way. It always, It's always yeah. been that way. Did you see that thing I posted uh, about the cigarettes? Mm-hmm. The, oh, shit. You got to look at it. So the Surgeon General, um, or they ruled against the uh, more, what, whoever the hell is that produces cigarettes. Um, I don't have a computer in front of me right now, but... Um, Whoever produced them forever, um, Mar- they Marlboro. Uh, yeah, but like the upper, the higher ups, the Dixon or whatever. I can't remember. The, anyways, um, they made them say that in a statement. It was posted in the grocery store the other day. I saw it. I'll show it to you after the show. Right. Um, that they knew that cigarettes were addictive when they started selling them to consumers, and it's yeah. right there above the fucking cigarette rack. For real. Yeah, they finally yeah. admitted it, man. Yeah. But like, everyone always has an agenda, it's, and yeah. it, I mean, it is what it is. It's a business. I get it. Yeah. You know, like everyone's in the business to make money. How mm-hmm. could you not? Well, I'm sorry, I'm being a dick, but I mean, it's like, how could you not know that? I mean, well, they, we've been they've known it since the '60s. Well, well we <clears> fucking, <throat> I mean, Native Americans knew it. Yeah. Yeah. And but you know, we still did it though. Yeah. Because we're addicted to it. Anyways, yeah, I mean, it's just something that, man, we, we, we battle with every day. But I think it's cool that, <clears throat> one, I think that, uh, first off, I feel like we're interrogating him like he's done crime or something. Because <laughs> like, we got hey, two look, white dudes out here talking to black people. So and sorry, the table. door's right there. I was going to say, I was going to say that shit when you came in. This, this feels like my SBD interview. Yeah. I, I was almost, <laughs> Bro. I almost became a cop at one point. For real? Damn. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I don't like this. I'm finna arrest some people. Nah, yeah, I didn't. All it took was the interview. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. Well, but I, I think that it's important <laughs> that we can talk about things. You're Facts. black. We're white. Yeah. We, we may have different views on things, the way we yeah. perceive things. We may have yeah. different, you know, uh, cultures and communities. Yeah. Our communities are not the same, but mm. they can intertwine and we can, we can all exist together yeah. and flourish together for sure yeah. um but there's just been something in society that's always pinned us against each other mm-hmm. you know whether it be our you know our wrongdoing what's our forefathers wrongdoings all those yeah. things you know and i i think it's great that that things are getting better for multiple races you know for and sure. you know how they interact with each other yeah. but i also think it's bad that we're always still trying to attack each other you know yeah. there's not we but the groups those for groups sure. yeah. those subcultures are always they have the wall up, you know, yeah. whether whatever side it may be. It, it's a it's a unique situation because there is that history between black and white, but there's now that there are no there's no slavery in America, and black people are free and allowed to just be Americans. There's still that clash of a difference in cultures because you, you you have a different culture. Yeah. See, but the crazy thing is we all have cultures that we share because we're all from the South and we're from Shreveport. Yeah. So we all know about Shreveport shit. Just like I said, your parents pretty much raised you the same way my parents yeah. did. But it's like you would think growing up in a black neighborhood, if you don't talk to a lot of white people, you would think that, oh, well, this is just some black shit and it's exclusive to what's going on over here because the, the stereotype is that white people have all the money and black people have none of it. So when a, if a white person says, oh, that's some ghetto shit, they don't necessarily mean that's some black shit. Right. They just mean that's some shit that poor people would do. And I might do that poor shit, too, because <laughs> I got family that's from not the black hood, but I'm from a low-income white neighborhood. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? But 
we use we use the same words but we have different contexts when we use it black people usually say ghetto shit they mean some black shit because that's all they know you dig what i'm saying so if they hear a white person say that same word they might get offended but they don't understand the context yeah. but i think a lot of this shit could get diluted and gone away if we understand that pretty much the reasons why we have mo a lot of these misunderstandings is because we have different cultures that we're used to that we have the same things but we use either the same words but a different meaning or vice versa mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying a lot of this shit we just i'm used to saying it this way but i hear somebody say the same word or the same or you and it just if me and you would didn't never met and we got an altercation some other people can watch it and think that they could see you hit me out of nowhere and be like oh he hit him he he beating him up because he black and i could have been an asshole to you and you don't play that shit yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. but there's other people can start the fire from their perspective and which could be a real thing you could have dealt with racism with white people but you they see you beat me up their whole mind frame is it's a race thing and it probably yeah. won't even be that yeah so well, that they get that gets messed up too that's that kind of go back to the mic up shit that's why i don't like to talk about it too much because people get mad for me i'm not even that mad yeah you know what i'm saying and now i can't even work somewhere because mike Epps think that i'm mad now you like don't let him work in the comedy <laughs> industry oh, nah. but you know it's, well that's a huge issue we have because like yeah. you may have a misunderstanding with someone for sure and you're of a different color ethnic religious background whatever yeah and that happens mm -hmm. and maybe you don't maybe you do and you may resolve it but you have right. bystanders yeah that are trying to jump in and make it something that it's not for sure and that's a huge issue we have i think yeah, yeah, like yeah. there needs to be a black spokesperson to teach white people how to get along with black people for you know sure. or how to take things yeah. that they don't understand because yeah. they or how to blend the culture and i for think sure. the other side of it too like yeah. white people say hey hey look this is how we do things mm -hmm. and this is how we say things but it doesn't mean yeah. it's not supposed to you know and for same sure. thing for hispanic and you know asian yeah. and all there's right. there's a pair do that shit he had a draft there's some yeah. Remember that yeah, shit? yeah yeah that, yeah yeah, yeah. See, like, the racial the, draft the, yeah. the, the, <laughs> one of the best I think, I he ever it's fucking, did it's fucking legit though that would yeah, work yeah. you know for sure and like <laughs> the crazy thing is the only thing that makes it to the other side of other cultures is the stereotype shit so you know what i'm saying yes. so and then if you joke about it people get the joke but then they'll think like Oh, well, this is all that black people do, or this is all that white people do. But it's like, there's so many different subgroups of white people and black people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, but have you ever seen an Asian funeral, though? An uh, Asian funeral? No. I want to go to one so bad. Have That's you, not interesting. I ain't never seen one either. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> Whatever you going on, bro. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. No. But I mean, have you? If you didn't have those, have you though? <laughs> no, I'm no. Not. If you didn't have those stereotypes, you wouldn't have jokes, though, man. So yeah, yeah, it's like sure. one of those things, man. I think uh, we need to be we need to be happy. With, you know how we got here, and we need yeah. to, to we need to roll with the punches, and also realize that <clears throat> a lot of people did a lot of fucked up shit along the way, yeah. and we're still paying for it. Yeah. You know, and it just is what it is. But mm -hmm. we we learn from our mistakes, dude. Sure, you yeah. know what I mean? If we if we had uh, more. I, don't, I, for lack of a better word, tolerance and understanding, a lot of shit. Cause you can, you can, you can, you don't have to like some shit if you don't like it. But I think one of our biggest downfalls is there's not there's a lack of critical thinking. That's yeah. even in like public schools and shit. Like it's not taught or pushed. Just like with paying taxes and paying. There's a lot of life skills that we need, and they're not all bill related it's a lot of just how to think and how to talk mm -hmm. to people we don't have to talk the same or think the same to be cool with each other you dig what i'm saying yeah of course and you can always have there's a healthy dialogue and shit or there is a there's a such thing as healthy dialogue but a lot of time we don't get it it's just well just people ain't trying to hear it yeah <clears> because they, they you know for whatever little corner or square they grew up in and yeah. that was they were just indoctrinated but this is how you handle things it's a scenario For you sure. see this type of person here's your reaction you see that type of person here's your reaction yeah, yeah, yeah. only interact with these type of people yeah you know what i mean it's just it's unfortunate but i don't know we're growing out of it but at the same time there's these people that just yeah. want to be it's they always want to be important bullshit. man they yeah. want to be important and um so they want to be social justice warriors and they don't really they don't really have any skin in the game but they just want to feel like they're attached to something so yeah. then they try to gang up on someone which is not the way that yeah. stuff all works but it works a second it's a second of your life mm -hmm. a second of the life you're you're famous yeah, you know what i mean a second yeah. of the life you have attention mm -hmm. but then you have to if you're doing that just for attention then you have to that's Keep your going. fucking identity mm -hmm. that's your identity the rest of your life because you did that one thing or you spoke up for those people when it was none of your fucking business or you don't have a dog in the fight and you, you jumped in there and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about you didn't read any context you just said 
well, I feel the same too, and I'm gonna attack these people too. And it's like, yeah. man, it's just uh, it's unfortunate, man. Yeah, it is. We gonna yeah. figure it out. Yeah, yeah. We gonna figure it out. We gonna be all right, man. When shit, it's like my homeboy the other day. You seen that shit where where my homeboy was talking shit about Key Mexico? No, I don't think so. My homeboy Byron was talking shit about Key Mexico, and then like it ended up getting like a bunch of people shared it, and they were giving him shit. It like got to the point where some people were like literally giving him death threats. That's, in his DMs, yeah. Which like, I mean, Rodrigo and all them ain't about that shit. I mean, Rodrigo reposted it because he really he was like, "Hey guys, we suck," and he was just being a dick yeah. and being funny too. But like, but like, people were literally being like, "This dude's a fucking asshole" and all this shit, and then like literal death threats in his DMs no, that's, that's, about not liking a restaurant. That's pretty much what's happening now with the ramen shit. It's like it was funny because <laughs> I was talking shit on Facebook too. I'm just making jokes because. I don't. I just passed by the other place, the new place, and I was like, "Oh, that looks like a place I want to go to." But I, I fuck with the dudes at Ghost Ramen. But it's just like it went from being funny to like now people are like, "Well, I stand with so and so," and I'm like, <laughs> "Damn, now it's not even fun no more." Because like we know somebody. Wait, what sh- happened with that shit? Because I don't. What, so uh, <laughs> the dude that's over. Go- well, I don't know. The Ghost Ramen page posted f- photos of their ramen and the new place's ramen and said, "Hmm, it looks like somebody's copying us." Basically, that's what they said, okay. and then. The, People started sharing it and it was like somebody made a long post about how it's not a good they shouldn't have did it and it sounds bitter and blah 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 blah. It's like, why would you do that? And then people are now like, Yeah, you sound bitter and um there's enough the Shreveport is big enough for two rhyming spots and all of this shit. And I'm just making jokes. And then somebody's like, Well, I stand with so and so I'm like, damn, now it's become political. Yeah. Now you're like, I'm sticking my Foot in the sand. Well, that's what people did with the key Mexico. Yeah, that's bullshit. what happens, man. That's what happens. I mean, people like, need, they feel like they need to be attached to something. Yeah. And it's okay to stick up for someone, but also at the sure. same time, shut the fuck up and just let, let's see what happens. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. Let it fold see, up. See what happens, man. I can understand if we're talking about something that's extremely yeah. serious and it's yeah. not meant to be satire. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's obvious is it's, most of that's meant to be satire yeah. and you shouldn't take it. But anytime you see those those satire posts and you're at, at first glance, you do, you're like, Oh fuck! Yeah. How do I react to this? And you realize, oh, this is bullshit. Like I saw one, a website. I'll send it to you, but I sent it to uh, my business partner the other day, and it was um, eat dog food. And it was like they were oh, putting the breeze. Yeah. Have you seen that yes. website? Yeah. And they were putting the breeze up there, and it was like saying this cut of meat from the Chihuahua and blah blah blah. <laughs> and, and if you just look at it in glance, yeah, it looks. Real. You will literally lose your shit if you're a dog, yeah. like you're a dog lover, or whatever. You're like, what the fuck? This is bullshit. Right. But if you actually read into it, it's a fucking. It's ve- they're just vegans trying right. to just be like promote like don't eat meat at all yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, yeah man it's 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 the, the proper reaction to shit like that is read some more do yeah some <laughs> exactly yeah. read into it before you comment don't believe everything you see no matter what that. it is even Definitely. if it's on social media look into it get yeah. the context get a lot of the information before you formulate opinion because Definitely. you may formulate an opinion and then look like a complete fucking jackass yeah when you don't know shit or th- you know if you actually read into the context then you have opinion at least you have a, an opinion uh, an informed opinion what What's also funny is that now, like the funniest thing to me always, this may be some white shit, so you may not know this. <laughs> I like I went to bring North this up, Boy, so I might be right. <laughs> when someone posts a snake, yeah, you, I don't know if you've seen that, but I, I'm sure you have. When someone posts I'm trying a snake, to find out what kind of snake, and then it is. everybody fucking tells you, like, the, and you look in the comments, and this yeah. is this happens all the fucking time. They're okay. like, "What type of snake is this?" Comments, there's thirty different motherfuckers That's saying hilarious. this thirty yeah. different motherfucking snakes. <laughs> That's a python. No, it's not. No, man, that's a garden snake. Nah, bro, that's a copperhead. No, hold on, man. That looks like a water moccasin. Hold on, man. I don't know what that is. Bro, it's got a diamond head. It's venomous. Well, hold on. It could be a chicken snake. And it just goes on and on. Dude, it's white people shit. It's hilarious. That's funny. But, uh, (laughs) and I don't even fuck with snakes at all. But, it, so I didn't know. I just know it's a fucking snake. And I ain't yeah, fucking with it. That's all. But yeah, dude, it's funny. But we have AI now, so AI can oh, AI can look at a, generate an, an image and tell you what it is. But at the same time, you know the fucking keyboard warriors that would when someone would ask a question and then they would Google that shit and they go in there and type it in the comments like they know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, you can't yeah. do that anymore either. Because AI is always gonna give you the fucking answer, so you can't be the one. You know what I mean? You can't be the one acting like you know what the fuck you're talking about because oh, you Googled good. it because everyone can. You yeah, know? yeah. It's funny Funny. shit. Cute fucking Keanu Reeves. Whoa. (laughs) Fucking Matrix. Uh. What's your favorite crowd to perform to? Like, if you're Uh, blended, white, black, uh, what kind of club? Like, what's your, what's your, like, where do you feel like that you, and this is not a loaded question. I'm just interested. Like, where do you feel like you flourish at? I I, I can't really, it really doesn't depend. It doesn't matter. The crowd doesn't matter. Um, I used to get hung up on it because at first I was like, I don't think I'm going to be funny to anybody. Then I was like, I don't think I'm going to be funny to black people. 
And I was like, okay, well, I, I'm funny to black people. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be funny to white people. And I was like, am I only funny? But I realize I've gotten to the point now where I'm just funny. So it doesn't matter who's in the crowd. I can, I'm okay. Uh, so the crowd doesn't matter as long as there's people there. I hate performing in front of chairs. Um, but my preferred venues is more intimate settings. I can do, you know what I'm saying? I think I can do a big theater. I haven't done like a big theater yet. I've done theaters small on, on smaller scale, but I like intimate crowds. Like at, uh, when you see me at um, East Bank. That East was Bank, cool. Yeah, like yeah. 120 people. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. If it's if it's small and the, the, it's not too much going on, like TVs and shit, I don't, it doesn't, I don't mind that, but I'd rather just be, we're just in the room having a good time. So, I don't know. It, it, the crowd doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. It, as long as they, you know, it's, I don't like prove, not prove, but um, people that are too serious that they can't laugh at shit that they're not supposed well, to laugh I think everyone at. should get a disclaimer. I think there should be like a, yeah. it, this is my opinion. I think mm-hmm. there should be like a video disclaimer okay. that gets someone ready for a comedy show. Uh, the other night when we were at that comedy show, there was yeah. an, an alarming amount of older people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah. like, I went to some of your other shows. <laughs> there was, man. Just, you yeah. said alarming. There was. It was very alarming. I went to my <laughs> wife and I was I like, used to be afraid of <laughs> I, I fucking, Wait a I'm, I said, we're the youngest people in here and I'm fucking 34. Yeah. I was like, but you go to, like, your last show, like, last show I saw you at uh, Seven Tap. Right. You know, right, right, your right. demographics, like, you know, anywhere from 20, 21 to, you know, 40. Right, right, right. This yeah. show, dude, they fucking more than half the crowd was yeah. over. 50. Yeah, yeah. I really think so. And yeah, I kept for sure. seeing these people walk in. I'm like, first off, I was like, I'm proud as fuck that they only market this on social media and all these motherfucking boomers showed up. Yeah, so yeah. one, I was excited for whoever, for the guys who promoted that. I was yeah. like, good job. Y'all got all these old motherfuckers out. For sure. You know what I mean? But at the yeah. same time, I was like, it's, it's, it's scary because they don't know, a lot of them don't know how to take jokes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because I, I noticed that throughout the show before yeah. you came on, that how they were heckling, you know, there was a heckler and then how people were talking to people and they were getting offended. Mm. I was like, I guess you only watch blue collar comedy tour. You don't know how this works. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to know that. Like, if you're first off, you sit on that front row, they're gonna fuck with you. Oh, for sure. Don't sit yeah. on the front row. Nope. And even if you're on the third or fourth row, they're probably yeah. gonna fuck with you. If like, I can see you, like a lot of people are lucky that it was black in the back. Because like people are like, oh, I don't want to sit up the front. I'm gonna sit in the back. Like if I can see you, it don't matter. I'm, I'm gonna say something if I want to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah, nah. They need a disclaimer, like a video, like I feel you. I'm gonna fuck with you. Yeah. And don't take anything. I mean, the name of the show is "Don't Take This Serious." But you sure. know, like that tells you, don't take this fucking serious. Don't get butt hurt. And We're here to make everybody laugh. And mm-hmm. one thing someone says is may piss someone off. The other thing makes someone laugh out loud. Yeah. Because there was one motherfucker. I guess he was just drunk, bro. He was laughing and everything. I was like, God yeah. damn, I wish I had this. Sense of humor. <laughs> this motherfucker was just. <laughs> Oh, this big belly laughing, man. I, I was it. like, that shit wasn't it. funny, bro. That old what? white dude that was telling you that he liked Fresh Prince and all that shit that one time, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. yeah. What shit. happened? Boy, what I, happened? We were at, um, it, yeah. it was like a, it's like a private club or something somewhere. I forgot the name of it, but um, Chris booked that show. And there was a guy, he was drunk. And people kept telling me, man, you can't wait till, we'll just say his name is Ricky. Man, I can't wait till Ricky see you, man. Ricky crazy. I'm like, okay, yeah, Ricky I'm crazy, ready. okay. Ricky walks in and he I'm in the middle of some shit. He just he walks in from in the middle of my set and he's just like, Man, I heard you was the motherfucker they said don't fuck with. And I was like, What? Yeah, they said don't fuck with you. I'm like, Well you fucking with me now. Wait, what are you t-? so he kept doing this shit and he's trying to relate to black shit. So he just started naming <laughs> old black shit. He's like, Yeah, Fresh Prince. And I'm like, Why why are we talking about Fresh Prince? And he's Martin Lawrence. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Fresh Prince and then just walk off. <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? He's like came in and said some just some black shit. shit. Mark black shit. Calm, he shit funny yeah. to me though. Mark just calm. He's like, so you just naming black shit? Like he just gonna name black shit too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. But that happens a lot though. People get drunk and you know they they think they're saying shit that makes sense, but they're not. Oh, it's just, just another, it's a culture. That's another culture yeah, thing for man. sure. But, but like it's always a funny like when you're younger and you're trying to tell that joke. You know, yeah. like you heard the com the, the uh, comedian say something, and you try to tell it to your buddy, and you yeah. fuck it all up. You know um, what I mean? Especially yeah. if you're white, tell another white. Like we're white kids, and I'm watching like fucking. I watch Eddie Murphy, and I'm trying yeah. to yeah. tell you this set without dropping an M bomb. You know, yeah. and still trying to be funny. It don't work. It don't work. <laughs> it, bro, I hate telling other people jokes. Like I, I fuck them up. I'm not good at telling other people jokes, man. It's, but it, you know, it's a thing. So you think most influential comic who do you think that would be on your career like uh, so for far me? yeah to date uh, like all the way back to damn I mean, prior uh, that's hard bro can i do a top three do let's that? go all right so we got uh eddie murphy dave and 
Patrice O'Neal. Okay. Yeah, them, they're probably my top three, but that shit changes because then Tom is up there right now in my top five. Uh, Tom has an interesting style. Yeah. You fuck with Roy Scrobel? You sound for me. F- Roy, fuck with Roy Scrobel. I, for sure. I'm like, like white dude. Like, if I yeah. ever get up there with you, that's how I'm gonna be. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's just my stage. type. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's you, my. You sound like you want to get on on stage. I'm considering, man. One yeah, day. One day, maybe. Sure. Um, I just think that I have a lot of built up stuff that I could throw out there but at the yeah. same time I don't want it to be an identity thing like it would just gotcha. be me fucking around you yeah, know what yeah. I mean I wouldn't be trying to make it something that's not but it just mm. seems for the longest time growing up like you I was shy would not talk like what I'm doing now this is not me until sure. it, it is me now but it yeah. you know this just happened over the past five years gotcha. and like that's just something that my old me would be like scared shitless of mm. and now it seems like a challenge that could be interesting you know what I mean gotcha. but yeah. but I'm I'm different, man. But every comedy comic is, you know, what I mean, everybody's yeah. different. Like I don't like the stuff I relate to and thinks funny. A lot of people don't think's funny, yeah. but there's a lot of like hardcore yelling, like white comedians. I don't like that shit. I don't mm-hmm. like the loud in your yeah. face. I just don't. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like a mix of it. What I'm saying is this: was a uh, like Roy Scovel. There's yeah. uh, there's three people in my life that I've like fucking sob cried like laughing so hard yeah and roy is one of them okay. bernie's one of them sure. and actually early kevin hart shit yeah, was yeah, one yeah. of them kevin was a monster because the motherfucker you remember the uh the uh he was talking about how old timers talk when they're trying to turn women on he said they yeah, old, old timer talk he said he said he's he a white dude trying to replicate a black he said, dude he said, he said he said he said he said old time talk when they were trying to turn women on he said i'm gonna get the dog and the cat trying to make you pussy mad <laughs> <laughs> i remember that shit yeah <laughs> he's talking about, he talking about he, he's like he's like i'm gonna get the pussy hot he said get the <laughs> he, said, he said get the blow dry put it on high i'm like what the fuck are you talking like that shit hit his kevin's early jokes was so crazy because it was like so funny but it's smart but you don't think it, it doesn't sound smart i was like yeah. bro this is so dumb that it's smart like it's so dumb it's stupid yeah. but it's funny it's like it takes a smart person to think of some dumb shit like the this. intellect like, on comics is yeah. through the roof and i think yeah. that's been tapped here recently via podcast because sure. you listen to these comedians have conversation you realize yeah, yeah. how intelligent they are you realize Thanks. how linked into what's going on in the world they are mm-hmm. and that's what i think that's what gets me excited about it is gotcha. that there's so much behind the scenes right like that what you do that people don't know about and i yeah. think they need to realize that yeah they don't need to take you serious when you're telling jokes but at the same right. time they need to realize that this is a serious art mm-hmm. and that you put a lot of work and a lot of For time sure. into it yeah a lot of people think it's just like a, a clown jukebox right like, <laughs> I, I hate going like i hate telling people i do comedy and i hate when i forget that i hate to because you know you talk to people and they're like oh what do you do and I, I without thinking i'm like oh i do stand up and then as soon as you say stand, motherfuckers like, tell me a joke. <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's not the right set. If I tell you a joke, it's going to be a long ass story. It's not going to be funny because you're going to look at me crazy. But if I do it on stage, it makes sense. I'm probably funny in conversation, but that's, you, once you tell me to tell a joke, now in my brain, I'm trying to be funny. And then that's when it's like, it's right. over. I'm not that type of person. I got a homie who, it's a funny story. When I first started, and I really love this shit. And I got a homie, Justin Jackson. He's a phenomenal rapper. You know him. He can rap his ass off and he funny as shit. Now, he, everybody knows he's funny. And there was one time when I first started, I talked to my homegirl and I happened to see her in the street and I was talking to her and I was like, yeah, I just left a comedy show and I was like, oh, that's, I'm proud of you. And then she goes, oh, Justin, now he should do stand up. And it hurt because she just like, <laughs> fuck what I was talking about. He's like, no, he needs to do it. So I was like, damn, like, I just tell you about my dream. You know, fuck me. <laughs> but now like, I'm not I'm not always that funny in conversation. And it's just like people expect you to do that. And that's why sometimes I'm weirded out with interviews. I'm like, what are they expecting? Because it's probably not going to be, I'm not going to be like DC Young Fly, hilarious all the time. Yeah. Mike Epps, hilarious all the time. I'm not I'm not a clown getting on a radio show. Like, all right, y'all, what are we finna do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm chilling. Like with, with all these bits yeah. loaded up. Yeah. I just, I, bro, well, that's another problem with the, the word interview. I yeah. I, I, I'm a, I low key it aggravates me when people say that was a great interview with so and so motherfucker this is an hour and a half two hour conversation, conversation. right right it's right. not an interview now it may yeah. sound like one because I'm trying to get to know you well, but right. that's how we do in conversation yeah. another thing that always gets me mad is that people seem to be identified people think that they need to identify somebody by their occupation right so I never like to say hmm. it's really bad in business to business shit because I've mm. been in that for years and you walk up to somebody and say I'm DJ mm. this is what I do what yeah. do you do like 
it aggravates me because that's forced in business. But I hate that when we're in like a, a real conversation outside of business because yeah. that's not your identity. Yeah, you're a comedian, and we're gonna talk about comedy. Was but you? also, I'm trying to get to know you, right? Because right, right. if we ever gonna get to a real conversation and talk about re- real things, whether it be good, bad, or ugly, mm-hmm. I need to get to know you. Right. I need to know how you're gonna react when I say things. You need to know how I'm gonna react when I say things. We sure. need to know how what those points are that we don't need to hit and also the ones we do need to hit and you can't get that by an interview you also can't get the real substance of anyone by an interview that with loaded questions Mm -hmm. like you have i have this question one i'm going to ask it and before (laughs) you even tell me what i'm doing or what your 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 remark is i'm already worried about asking you question two so i'm not taking that information in seriously right inherently then i'm not taking the conversation seriously right and yeah, so yeah, yeah man i mean to go on a rant but no, like people say that and i understand that that this is still this is a long form conversation platform that that's just now been created and the masses are just now seeing podcasts they've been around for what 15 years now but people right. are just now using them consuming information sure. and for the longest time especially these old the older generation they're used to just hearing interviews yeah so they don't mean anything by it right. when they say hey I liked your interview with so and so, and I know that. But yeah. low key, I'm like, motherfucker, yeah. I want to correct you. You know what right, I mean? Because right. that's it's just not the style of conversation I like to have. Gotcha. Yeah. Nah. This is I fuck with this. I almost said interview just out of. Nah. Habit. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I fuck with this podcast. Fucking table, bro. I fuck with this conversation. <laughs> nah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But nah, no, this shit. bro. I, I just I, I think it's important for people to hear that. I think it's important. Right. I think it's important for people to hear people. Like Longer than one minute. 60 minutes real. used to go you hard mean? as fuck. 60 minutes shot. 60 minutes? Oh, for Barbara sure. Walters was a motherfucking gangster, dude. Oh, that bitch was, she been, <laughs> wasn't she older than uh fucking Anne Frank or some shit? That bitch Probably. Old. Yeah. She old. Yeah. She, uh, well, Anne Frank would have been. Did I have a dream? Anne Frank was teaching me about music theory the other night. How? <laughs> what the, I don't know. How was she doing that? That's a random man. She was just, she could shred on a fucking guitar. It was the weirdest <laughs> fucking dream ever, bro. Like, I look over and like. <laughs> bro, that's crazy. I'm like, why the fuck is she teaching me like yeah. shit I already knew? But then she was yeah. like, she's like, she's like, and then here's like the G chord here, yeah. and then like, you know, I'm just like, what the bro. fuck is going do you, on? Do you have? Do you dream? Do you remember dreams? Yeah, do you get any material from them ever? Uh, I probably not have, like yeah. I had a dream the other night, blah blah, blah but nah. more like like, like if I idea. have a dream and then yeah. this make, uh, yeah, because a lot of my ideas and shit like it's not like I a lot of times like you know how people they have their best ideas in the shower yeah i'm kind of like that like if i'm like laying down but i'm not asleep i'm just at rest so like that kind of and then sometimes i'm pretty sure i can't think of nothing specifically but i'm pretty sure i've had a dream and then that influenced some shit on stage or something like that i can't ever remember my dreams for real man. it's so fucking frustrating they had a night terror the other night sleep paralysis whole nine wake up from it couldn't go to sleep for three hours and in that three hours i wrote a storyboard for a fucking feature film yeah, bro. You, well, I think there's you some, might be a genius. There's something in. I feel like you fucking with me. But no, I'm dead. Yeah, there's something. Like, there's something to yeah. being alone with your own thoughts with absolutely no distractions. Yeah. And maybe like also subconsciously, your body might have made itself do that just so you would get that information. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I but for me, I can't right. remember them here lately. Yeah. I remember sometimes I wake up and I'm like, fuck. I remember bits and pieces of shit, mm. but I haven't had a vivid dream in mm. so long. I think really? the only time I ever get vivid dreams is like when I pop a CBD pill, and it oh, will knock gosh. me the fuck out to where I'm in REM sleep for like fucking six hours. Damn. But I think my problem is I'm only getting like two hours of REM sleep a night because I'm a nerd with that shit too, yeah. on recovery and workout and I shit. I think the oil That's feel fucked you up too, bro. Yeah, because I had to sleep whenever I could mm-hmm. too, you know, so Damn. it's like you don't get REM sleep because it's like, if I'm waiting on the job to run up on this rig and do something, I'm gonna catch 30 minutes real quick. Look what that shit is doing us. I really don't like that shit. Cause when you said, well, I think you said it earlier, where it's just like, uh, fuck, I forgot what you said, but basically it made me think about, um, oh, you said when you're alone with your thoughts, like mm-hmm. when you, uh, I think why we so fucked. Another reason why we so fucked up, we don't have the time to think. We don't. We, we always we just react, always react, something. react, react, yeah. react. And I, I there, think there's something I talked about this. I might have talked about this on the podcast. I've talked about this in front of some business colleagues and some business networking things that I help educate on. Yeah. Um. And there was an article written forever ago. They in, they interviewed the CEO of Starbucks. Okay. And he he made this um, he his answer to these things where they like how do you start your morning off you know mm-hmm. and he's like for the longest time I would get up. <clears throat> not immediately go to like into work mode as soon as i hit the ground running and i'm i've been bad about this my whole life as soon as i hit the ground running mm-hmm. i go into work mode yeah and i'm immediately um reactive gotcha yeah and at some point when he started having kids and getting older that tends to happen to a lot of people he said I, at some point I, I learned to be proactive so 
I in the morning, and this was this was years ago. So this is before like jumping on internet. This is like newspaper times. So he's like in the morning. I get up. This is my new routine, and this is what's helped me become successful. Where I can separate things. Mm-hmm. I get up in the morning. And for the first hour of my day, I don't even think about business. I get up in the morning, I go make my cup of coffee, I get the kids up, I make them breakfast, I hang out with them, hang out with my wife, get them on their way, and then after, once that's all done, I'm being right when I wake up, I'm being proactive. Right. So I'm not immediately waking up and picking up my phone, and the first thing we're all fucking guilty of, and I try to do this subconsciously every day i try not to get up and first thing i do is get on this thing i try to at least right. move around five ten minutes mm-hmm. an hour seems crazy to me because i got so much shit going on right. but we get up and as soon as we get out of bed we immediately become reactive mm-hmm. this is the new form of ai and it's controlling our life it's good and it's bad but we immediately get up and we say we're reactive and so this thing has control of us and it yeah. drives all of our decisions all day long yeah, for sure. but if we were to just take some time to be proactive mm-hmm. then we have a long time with our thoughts right didn't mean for that to turn into all that but no, I, I always remember i don't remember who's told me that story i might have read it somewhere i might have heard it on a podcast this, it's been years since i've heard it probably 10 years ago but it's always stuck with me i think it's important that you need to you need to be proactive man you sure. be proactive yeah, yeah. you know and then there's a time to be reactive but a lot of people are just set on reacting yeah yeah reactive <laughs> yeah I'm not being a dick. Like, that's actually that's the key word. I, I feel you on that. <laughs> well, let's wrap this thing up. Look, yeah, yeah. man, uh, I had a good time, bro. Same, you definitely got to come it. back. And, and dude, I yeah. wish you all the success. I think you're Thank awesome. You. Where can everybody follow you? How can they find you? See uh, any shows? You know anything like that? I'm I'm in a transition of moving, so I don't have too many shows. I got a, a private birthday party show coming up in Dallas on Saturday, and I think that's it until like October that I have booked. But uh, yeah, I'm going to Austin to you know try to start the whole journey over again. But uh, you can follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm the most active. Instagram, M A R K P U G H J R. Um, and I got a link in my bio that can find everything. So it's easy to just do that. Go to my Instagram. You can find everything through that. Awesome man. Yeah. Well, thanks Appreciate for your time, bro. Enjoy Thank it. you, man. Yes, for sure. sir. Good to see you.